Good afternoon to everyone. Let us start with our service for this afternoon. We'll all stand up and open your... We'll sing hymn number one, Joyful, Joyful, at the fourth pages of your program. Joyful, Joyful, we adore you.
like to invite everyone to please open your Bible and Bible St. John or Gospel according to St. John. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. Please uh, follow with your eyes as I read. Again, please read with your eyes with understanding. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto us, he came unto, unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our great, omnipotent, omniscient, indescribable, uncontainable God, we worship you today. And we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we want, Lord, to thank you for everything that you have done for us, for saving us, O oh Lord, from redeeming us from darkness and brought us out into your marvelous light. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our light, who lighted our path so that we can see righteousness. Thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us, and today, Lord, we want to give glory unto your name. We want to lift up your name in singing through the choir. And also, most especially, through the preaching of your word. May it be, Lord, our desire as a believers that we will embrace your word. And that we will open our hearts. That the true meaning of Christmas... It's not a material celebration, not materialism, but it's all about our spirituality. That because of him, O oh Lord, because of your son Jesus, because of his blood, we are all saved. Thank you, Father. And we pray also for those who do not know yet the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may use your word mightily, as your messenger open his mouth, that they will believe and trust in thee, O Lord. Give us grace, O Lord, and sustain our spirit so that we will be able, Lord, to sustain, to, to, to understand your word. We ask the guidance and the enlightenment and power of your Holy Spirit to be with us. Lord, our prayer today that all those who do not have faith in your son, Jesus. Convert them, O Lord, through your words. Thank you, Father. We entrust to you everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, again, we'd like to welcome everyone to our Christmas musical presentation, Cosby Bay Baptist Church in Peru. Kosebe Baptist International Mission Church would like to welcome everyone 
for our Christmas cantata. I'd like to encourage everyone to just sit back and relax and listen to the wonderful message of the song. First part of our presentation.
of the trip was so hard. It was cold, and Joseph was even more anxious than Mary. The waiting had been such a test. The questions, the remarks, he had grown to love her so much, seeing her patience and endurance and simple trust in God. And now, after all this, he couldn't seem to find him a room, and she was in labor. Keep going, Joseph said to himself. God will provide. He has to. The sky was clear and unusually brightened. He wondered why. The innkeeper grudgingly gave them one oil lamp in a blanket. It was just enough to see by the inside the dumb, musty stable. In the shadowy corner, protected from the cold, the baby was born. Relief, joy, tears, exhausted. Mary and Joseph can do no more than watch and wonder as Jesus left. But the shadows were gone. Inside the stable and outside too, the sky filled with magnificent light of angels. Angels who had been waiting in heaven for a very long time, anxious to announce his glory and to flood the sky with light. Until that morning, candles, lanterns, lamps, all light have been fully faded. Stars, sun, and moon have alternately erased, and darkness always unfailingly returned. But in that dawn, the light of heaven was born, never to go out again. Jo Joseph and Mary knew, and soon the world would know. They who had never seen lasting light now witnessed the unquenchable torches of eternity as they were set ablaze.
May I request everyone to please rise and please uh, open your Bible for our sermon text this afternoon. Open it on the book of Matthew, chapter 2. And we will read chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, responsibly. And then all together on the last verse, which is verse 12. Again, Matthew chapter 2, responsive reading, beginning verse 1 through 11. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, Then he rode, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. All together in verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Again, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. If I would pose a question to you this afternoon, what would be our proper response to Christmas? The proper response for us to Christmas is adoration. Adoration and worship. We call now our Reverend Paterno Tondo for the exposition of his word. Pastor, please minister to us. Thank you, Brother Rodel. Good afternoon. This is Hong Kong. This is not Philippines. It's my first time to be out of the country. And a uh, lot of experiences. But reserve that for storytelling. Coming up here, down below, I saw this. I cannot read it in Chinese. <laughs> but I saw these black things here, three of them. And the message is Happy Trickings. We were here this morning because of the baptismal service and the place is overcrowded. And Ate Lorna is telling me somehow that I hope she told me this place would be packed up with people also in the afternoon. But uh, I saw vacant uh, fuels there. And I'm reminded of this verse. In Luke chapter 13, verses 23 and 24, where it says here, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? 
And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Where are the people? Where are they now? They said that there are hundreds or thousands of Filipinos here in Hong Kong coming from a Christian nation. Where are the Christians? Where are they today? In the marketplaces? Or in Disneyland. Have you invited one? Just to prick your guilty conscience. <laughs> Ate Lorna told you to bring as many as you could. I have invited one. A sister in the Lord. We did not meet sometimes maybe 12 or 13 years, but after that, she gave me a load. So I called her up and invited her. That's the requirement. One for one. I passed the requirement. I have been delivering since Saturday afternoon some thoughts on Christmas. And uh, just for those who are not able to just hear even the title, last Saturday I delivered the message about the prediction of Christmas. And I have cited the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah and Micah, predicting the Christmas to come. On the first message Sunday morning, I talk about Annunciation, the announcement of Christmas. Then the middle of the day, I gave again the message Incarnation. Finally, the manifestation of Christmas. And in the afternoon, I talk about redemption, the ultimate purpose of Christmas. This afternoon, we will be dealing on adoration and worship, our proper response to Christmas. Forgive the computer, for in your bulletin or in your program, what is there is adoration and worship, our proper response to Christians. That is idolatry, worshiping Christians. But you see, the computer is already sleepy, so forgive. The words. It's Christmas, not Christians. Let us pray for a moment. Our loving Father, we thank you because in this part of the world, your people, mostly Filipinos, could gather and worship your name. This is our purpose of coming. Maybe we have other purposes. But Lord, help us to remember that why, the reason why we are here, because we want to adore and to worship the Lord. Bless your people and bless each one, even your servant, you sing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christmas season 2008 will come to an end. 
And you will just be counting another 365 days. And you will have another Christmas season. My desire, especially for those who might be worshipping in the past few years or many years, but did not really understand the message of Christmas, it's my desire that before we leave this place this afternoon, we are able to really understand the true essence of Christmas and we are able to have worship the Lord in our life today. Open your Bibles again to our text, Matthew chapter 2. We have read it already. Exactly 15 days ago, I arrived in uh, Macau. And few hours after arriving, Pastor Tandok, Donald Tandok, just lead me a few meters, less than 100 meters away from our outreach in Macau. He led me to a park near the church of a Portuguese. And there was there a display of a villain. We took pictures, sent it home. My family enjoyed it. But you see, most of the time, what do we see in the Belen? Three groups. The middle part, you see there, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. Laid in a manger. On the other side, you see there, the shepherds, with their animals, maybe. And the opposite side, you see these three people arriving and bringing their gifts. Just a side comment on the Belen as Christians. I think that is a confused presentation of the message of Christmas. Because if you read your Bible, we do not find an information that the shepherds and these wise men met in the Belen. Rather, it was the shepherds that first worshipped the newborn Jesus as he was lying down in a manger. And according to our text, these people coming from the east arrived more later, maybe a considerable time, and they were able to find the family in the house, not in the inn. So as believers, I hope next time around comes Christmas, do not present that kind of message. It's a confusing message about Christmas. Now let us come to adore and worship the Lord. Not the baby Jesus in a manger. Not the boy or the Santo Nino. Not even the crucified Savior still hanging on the cross. Not the one buried in the grave, but the resurrected Lord up in heaven. The baby Jesus did not remain a baby. He did not remain a boy to be worshipped as Santo Nino. He did not remain hanging on the cross. Thanks for this design. Nobody is hanging there except the name. Jesus. 
Because if our Jesus remain hanging there, then the Apostle Paul is telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we are of all men most miserable. Miserable na nga tayo. Nag-worship pa tayo sa istrikto na reliyon. Then we are most miserable. So let's worship the Lord, the resurrected Lord, not the baby Jesus, not the Santo Nino, the boy Jesus, not the crucified Jesus, but the crucified who was buried and rose again and ascended up on high. He is our risen Lord. He is the one that must be worshipped. No other one, no other name. The resurrected Jesus must be worshipped. I am reminded before the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was still on earth, there was an encounter of the Samaritan woman at the well, Jacob's well, famous well. And one time the Lord was alone and he was so thirsty and he approached the Samaritan woman at noon time and asking for a drink. And in that encounter, the Lord later explained to the woman a very precious doctrine about worship. And the woman said, you have your Bibles? I want you to see your Bibles, to look at your Bible. John chapter 4. I might be telling you a different story, but do like those people during the time of the Apostle Paul, not just listening to Paul, but they search the scriptures, whether what the Apostle is telling them is true. John chapter 4, starting from verse 20, the woman said to the Lord Jesus Christ, Our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say, and you say, you are saying, being a Jew, that in Jerusalem only is the place where men ought to worship God. So the woman was telling the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a Jew, and a Jew, a true Israelite, is telling people that worship must be done only in Jerusalem. The Samaritan woman is telling the Lord, our forefathers told us that worship must be here in this mountain. You know what is the mountain? It is Mount Gerizim in Samaria. Maybe you have already heard how the Samaritans and the Jews in relation to interpersonal relationships are doing. The Jews are very what? Very strict people when it comes to religion. The Samaritans are mestizos and mestizas. Some of their parents, the mother maybe would take what? A non-Jew husband. Some men would take a non-Israelite wife, resulting to what? 50-50. So, the Jews hated the Samaritans. So, the Samaritans cannot worship in Jerusalem. Though they have 50% Jewish blood, they cannot worship in Jerusalem. So, what their forefathers did, they established also a place, a worship place in that mount so that the Samaritans could worship their God in that mountain. 
That is the rival of the temple in Jerusalem. So the Samaritan woman is trying to say, You are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Our forefathers tell us, told us to worship here. You, you worship in Jerusalem. But you see, the Lord, in the, in the following verses, Jesus said to the woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain or in Jerusalem worship God or worship the Father. You worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is the hour when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Sometimes ago, a serious Catholic asked me with this question. Pastor, why is it that in your church I find nothing to help me in my worship. This is the verse that I gave her. You see, when the Lord Jesus Christ was here, this is what he said. Worship God the Father in spirit and in truth. The spirit has no physical or material part or image. Truth? What is truth? Who is truth? The Lord said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Somebody told me also that, oh, it's all the same even when you are in the same or in different religion, and in different teaching, anyway, we believe in one God, and we can reach the same destination. No, it's not true. The Lord said, there is only one way to reach that destination. So, here we have a very clear information, instruction, about worship. And in our, in our text, as we go back to our text, we will be considering the two representatives of worship. Two representatives of worship. Namely, the wise men representing true worship and Herod's group representing false worship. The wise men first we will be considering their identity. We will try first to identify who are these people. The wise men here in verse 1 and 2, they were men coming from the east and looking for the king of the Jews. Do you remember the fourth message I gave you? Redemption, the ultimate purpose of Christmas, taken from Galatians chapter 4. That the Lord Jesus Christ, according to that verse, was born of a woman, born under the law, and part of the presentation, part of the message is about the dispensations, the different dispensations. And I told you and reviewed to you about world history, biblical history, 
about the empires, the great empires. Remember that? The, the Babylonian Empire, what happened to that empire? Hmm? What did the empire do in relation to Israel? They were the ones that what? That took captive of the Israelites, especially the southern kingdom, and brought it to Babylonia, to Babylon. If you look at your map, if you have your Bible map, Israel and the place where the, the wise men came, it's far east. It's the eastern side of Israel. And your Bible map would tell you that east is Babylon. It is highly probable that the wise men were remnants of Jewish people from Babylon. You see, because during the time of the Middle Persian Empire, the Second Empire that toppled down Babylonian Empire, the Israelites were, were released from bondage by Artaxerxes. But not everyone left Babylonia. Why? Because they have already established their life in Babylon. There were three groups that went back to Jerusalem, but not everyone went back. There was Zerubbabel, there was Ezra, and the last one is Nehemiah. But not everyone went back to Israel. It's just like being a prisoner in Mountain Lopa in the Bilibet and establishing your family inside. Mountain Lopa, when you are released, some of the prisoners do not want anymore to go out of Mountain Lopa. Reason? Because even after they have served their sentences, the relatives maybe outside Mountain Lopa would still want run after them. And that is what happened. To some remnants of these Jewish people coming from the east. They might be what? Fanatic to the religion. They were well, well informed about prophecy of the coming Messiah. And so the time has come. When Christ was born, they, they have seen the sign. And that is the star. A different star. A miraculous star. They were wise men. Believed to be astronomers. The master of the heavenly bodies. And they are able to predict and tell what happened in the future. Because of this uh, wisdom that the Lord has given them. So they have searched for the newborn Messiah. And so that's the reason why they are, they are coming to Jerusalem. Coming from Babylon and traveling toward Jerusalem. I don't have an exact information how far is Babylon to Jerusalem. But more or less, it was a considerable time of trouble. Because they were not traveling by a jet plane or by a fast craft. They were traveling by foot. It could be a longer time to travel. And traveling during the time is not taken by these three men. It was very dangerous. A travel during the time is through a caravan. A caravan. A bigger group. Because of what? Maybe our experiences right now. Damo kawatan. Damo gapang lambat. You see? So, they were not just three 
They were traveling in caravans. I would rather believe that. Because that is what is history is telling us. It's dangerous to travel alone. Remember the parable of the good Samaritan? When there was a Jew assaulted and robbed along the way, it's hard to travel when you are alone or just you. So traveling during the time is taken by a caravan. And you can just imagine the kind of perseverance these people have. Persevering, traveling through the desert. Do you know why camel is used for travel in the desert? I have one information. They said that when you run out of water, camel has a lot of water stored. And you can kill your camel to survive in the desert. It's hard to survive in the desert without water. And camel has that big tank. And you can ask for, for maybe a share so that you can survive. What a perseverance! Just because they are looking for that newborn child, baby, to be worshipped. The wise men were persevering men. So their worship is characterized by perseverance. Is that a quality we can find among Christians today? Persevering Christian? Persevering worship? Or, well, I will worship if the rain will not fall today. You know, it's hard to walk when it's raining or it's a little bit too hot, showering. Or I will worship if, if worship could not be a persevering worship. Conditional worship. They were not only persevering. Their worship is also characterized by purpose. How do I know that? Their worship was really a purpose from the start. You look at when they inquire. Verse 2. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. We have come to worship him. Did we come to worship? Or you came to meet a friend? I'm not saying meeting a friend in worship is wrong, but if you come just for secondary reason to worship, I would like to suggest you change your priority. When you come, it's primarily to worship. And after worship is done, then you can meet your friend. That's why during worship, Do not gossip during worship time because you came to worship. Do that after, after the worship. It's fellowship time. It's the purpose of coming. So when you come to church on Sunday and other times designated for worship, you come for the purpose, not for other purpose. The wise men came, searching. They were persevering, but still focused on that purpose. We have come to worship. 
the third characteristic or quality of the worship, it was also planned. They have really planned to worship. How do we know that? You see, when worship is planned, then you do not just bring yourself not prepared. They are prepared, even with their offerings. They brought with them their offerings. Though it's hard. I just do not know how many kilos of gold they brought with them. Or how many sacks of frankincense and mere. Maybe it's the one at the back of the camel. I just do not know. But you see, they brought with them their offering. Oh, maybe Pastor will say, did you bring your offering? No, I'm telling what I'm saying. The wise men, I do not know with you. The wise men brought with them their offering. If you did not bring your offering, then you are not wise. <laughs> it was planned. So when we come to worship, we plan our worship. Do not just go to worship half-heartedly. Diba? Minsan masimbata, dali-dali, ula ka toothbrush. You have not prepared for worship. Bayo baliskad pa. <laughs> you go to party, you prepare. You go to worship the Lord, you are not prepared. What an irony. Is the Lord last? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Oh, how we love these qualities we find among the wise men. I wish myself to be coming to worship this way. I do not say I have always come ready. There are times, honestly, even a pastor, do not come to worship ready. Sometimes, with a heart burdened because Saturday evening there was an argument with the wife and I've not said sorry till the morning because waiting for do not let the sun go down <laughs> for your wrath. That's the application. So it happened during the night so you have to wait for That's true. Do not excuse the pastor. In fact, we are more accountable than you. And I'm telling you my experiences. So in the seminary, what we used to, to tell our students, the ladies especially, preparing for the ministry, do not quarrel with your husband pastor Saturday evening and Wednesday because it's it's Sunday worship and prayer meeting I understand oh, there are some of you who wanted to to have a pastor I like that but that's already an advance piece of advice to you The wise men were persevering worshippers. They come for the purpose. 
and they have planned their worship. Now let's look at the qualities on the other side. The opposite, worshippers. Maybe Herod and all those worshippers identified with Herod worshipping and doing worship. Not the right way. The false worship. What do we find first from Herod? Herod, when he had heard wise men saying, Where is he? The newborn king of the Jews. Herod, verse 3. When Herod the king heard, he was troubled. Not only Herod, all Jerusalem including the religious leaders. Remember, they were religious leaders. Plural, leaders of Israel. Herod was troubled. In other words, he was so disturbed when he heard about the newborn king to be worshipped. You see, during the Bible times, kings are being worshipped. They are treated as gods. If the, kings, if the king would ask somebody to bow down before him and kiss him or what, and you will not obey, then patay kang bata ka. The three friends of Daniel experience fire. Daniel experience the dean of lions. That's during the time of the kings. So when Herod heard that, oh, I have a rival. That is not good. So he was so disturbed. False worship has that characteristic. You are not really at peace when you are not worshipping the true God. And you cannot find peace in that kind of worship. Maybe to some extent you have deceived or maybe you can deceive yourself, believing you are at peace. But it's a temporary thing. You cannot make belief that there is peace without finding the Prince of Peace. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can set you free from trouble. He is the Prince of Peace, as we have considered. Herod was not only disturbed, his was a worship that is deceitful. You look at this. So Herod inquired from the wise men, he really what? Scrutinize the wise men and take note the information and here is the deceit. Verse 8. After the inquiry, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young child and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Was it sincere? It was a word of deception. From the very start, 
Herod was already troubled about hearing there is another king. What will happen to my throne? What will happen to my promised successor? So, Herod was not really sincere about saying, when you find him, then tell me the good news also, so that I could come and worship him also. That is deception. And later we will find really and prove that that is deception. Because the third quality of the kind of worship that Herod is presenting to us is it was a destructive kind. What happened? When the wise men did not return to bring her the word after the warning of the angel. You see, when the wise men finished their hallelujah and doxology after the offering, they were warned of the angel to go another way, not to return to Herod anymore. The angel knows what will Herod do? So what happened? You look at the verse, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, he was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the cause thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. One of the reasons I did not, and I do not, believe that the wise men were able to worship the newborn baby together with the shepherd is that, Based on the inquiry of Herod, more or less it took them two years to reach Jerusalem. It took them more or less that long before they can worship the young child. They were not able to see the Lord in a manger. But what they saw is the Santo Nino. Are you still having that, that image in your mind, the Santo Nino? Are there Santo Ninos here paraded on uh, anong, anong occasion yan? April and March? Back home in the Philippines, there are many devoted to Santo Nino, worshiping the boy Jesus. But the wise men were able to witness, or heard, was able to destroy all those baby boy, two years old and below, based on his research, inquiry, from the wise men. You see, Herod come to the conclusion that based on the information given by the wise men, more or less the boy is now two years below. So he has to destroy all the male child two years below. Herod's worship it was an unpeaceful worship. It was a worship that is characterized by what? Trouble. A disturbed kind of worship. A disguise or deception kind of worship. And it was also a destructive kind of worship. 
what kind of worship we are supposed to do in this time. We are living in the dispensation of grace. As I have pointed out to you in our fourth sermon, it is the time where we are enjoying more of the privileges and favor from the Lord. We are living under His grace. And grace means God just giving and giving and giving to the ill-merited, unmeritable gifts that we can, we can receive from Him. We are not worthy of any blessings from the Lord. Especially when we look at our lives on the day-to-day -day basis. Maybe sometimes you have experienced that. The feeling of being a Christian when you are inside the church on Sunday. But how about Monday to Saturday? You see, the Christian life must be a life of worship. Not only on Sunday, but on a day-to-day -day basis. Because worship is the acknowledgement of the worth of the Lord Jesus Christ personally to you and to me. What is his worth? Is it worth your Hong Kong dollar? Salvation was a free gift. It was a gift that cannot be won, that we cannot pay for, even throughout our life. All that this Christmas, We'll just be able to learn how to worship the Lord properly as our response. That from this time on, when you think of worshiping God, think of the fact that you are worshiping God. Not in the mountain in Jerusalem as the Samaritans, or in Jerusalem as the Jew or the Jewish nation. But the Lord said, you worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And in our worship, like the wise man, then we will worship persevering. Because he promised that he will come again. Do not give up. Along the way, it will be hard. And the more we go closer, the more it's going harder. The enemy is not happy to see us worshiping and serving the Lord the right way. Persevere in, our, in your worship. Worship with a purposeful heart and worship God. Prepared, always prepared. So plan your worship. God bless His word into our hearts. Loving Father, we just thank you for the time. We can enjoy your word and we can lift up the name of our Savior, the Lord, who came that Christmas. He was worshipped as a baby by the shepherds. He was worshipped as a boy by the wise men. He was worshipped by many of the Jewish people during his time. 
as the man Jesus. But you see, Lord, thank you for the information that he did not remain a mortal man, but rather he died for our sins. He paid the penalty. He saved us. He gave us eternal life. Because of his death, we have life. But he did not remain in the grave. He was resurrected. Unascended. And so Lord, help us to always see in our mind through faith. To worship God and the Lord, the resurrected one. Not as a baby. Not as a boy. Not as a man, Jesus. Not the crucified Jesus remaining at the cross. Not even the Jesus who remains in the grave. But the Jesus who was resurrected and lived forevermore. He is the Lord, our living Lord, the one we are serving, the one we are worshiping, and supposed to be worshipped by all His creation. Bless your word into our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We thank God for that message. Thank you, um, Reverend Tondo. Now for uh, return of our tithes and giving back of our offering and pledges, may I call uh, Brother Romy and uh, Brother Seidel to help us. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for that message. We thank you, Lord, for your word that really remind us, oh Lord, how great you are in our lives and reminded us for saving us. Lord, once again, we pray for the offering that the money that we will be collected will be used in the expansion and for reaching out, reaching out for more souls in this uh, place, in every part of our outreaches, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. And we continue, Lord, to pray for those, uh, for our employers, that they will keep their job so that we will be able, Lord, to respond to this. Thank you so much, Father. We ask your blessing upon this. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
to rejoice is Christmas at its time of year that we face and celebrate. Is not only the wise man rejoicing with exceeding great joy, for good tidings of great joy is for all people throughout all time. Joy has become bringing hope, peace, and love to all mankind. Joy that sustains you when everything fails. Joy that believes you to heavenly realms. Seeking to save you and me from the water is heaven. If you are looking for this kind of joy, it has already been given. It's peace that the wind sell this world and destroy salvation. Christmas for as long as we can remember. This is the time of years and it's only time of this year we do this that we pull out the same cassettes, CDs, and even record albums to listen to the favorite Christmas music. Now some of you won't admit it, but you're going to listen to Mannheim Stream Roller, Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Carpenters, some of you listen to Bing Crosby or Elvis Presley singing blue, 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 blue Christmas. You know, it's amazing that a name like Elvis could cause such a stir. But the name can spark an emotion or a thought bring a smile or a tear. You see, names are how we recognize one another a name because becomes synonymous with person's reputation, behavior, and character. Have you ever wondered why you're given your name? How many of us now deciding factor, the finding moment that you gave us our name? Many of us have uh, wondered what parents were thinking when they named us. That's why some of us have nicknames. In the days of the Bible, a name implied so much more than it does today. A name revealed something special about the child to which it was given. For an incident during their birth to their temperament or appearance, from an everyday object to the time, the day they were born. Jewish parents named their children to give significance and meaning to the newborn child. But a baby was about to be born and had the name given to him by God himself. Jehovah, God sent a messenger from heaven to visit a young Jewish girl that had found favor in his sight. God had chosen his pure young lady to be the mother of his son. The angel was very careful to convey to her the name 
his heavenly father had chosen. Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in his waddly clothes and laid him in a manger. And they called him Jesus, which means salvation, for he shall save his people from their sins. There are some distinctive things about Jesus that cannot be said about other person. Beginning with the prophecies that were written concerning his birth, Isaiah spoke of a virgin girl that would give birth to a son. The prophet Daniel wrote the precise time in history when the anointed one would come. The psalmist foretold that kings from the east would visit him, bearing gifts. Over 700 years before Jesus was born, 
the prophet Micah told the specific location where all of this would happen. He revealed that Bethlehem was a place where a ruler would be born and that his ruler had origins long ago from the day of eternity. So many prophecies and every one of them down to the smallest detail were all fulfilled and this one born in Bethlehem. They had never been nor would there ever a baby like Jesus.
angel proclaimed Christ is born first to the most unsuspecting group of individuals. In the darkness of night, there was a divine display of sound and lights, startling those who first heard the announcement that the Savior was born. With amazement the wonder, they hurried to the place where the Savior lay. An amazing night for those shepherds of the hill close to Bethlehem. Think about it. Angels dispatched from heaven interacting with ordinary men. Every time I read the Christmas story, I see something fresh, ordinary, something new. This year, I noticed the different names attributed to Jesus at his birth. Each name serves as a description of who Jesus really is and how he works in the lives of people. The angels speaking to the shepherds described the baby in the manger, a savior. He called the one wrapped in swaddling clothes, Christ, which means Messiah. The angel also proclaimed that he, Jesus, was Lord. Mary and Joseph recommended to give the unborn child the name Jesus. Yet the angels also called him son of the highest the Son of God, and that he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. When the Magi came, they inquired, Where is he who is born King, and where could he be found? Of all the names, the one that speaks most powerfully is the name Jesus, for it is the name we find the source of all that's good and all that's holy. You see, Salvation is in the name, healing is in the name, the forces of nature bow to the name, even the demons tremble at the sound of that name. The precious name of Jesus has changed the lives of so many. The name changed me, for that name saved me and gave me life as well.
And because of that wonderful name, I discovered the reason for living. I found peace and contentment that the world could never give. I don't know about you, but there is no name more precious or lovely or wonderful than the name of Jesus. All that we have ever needed is found in that most precious, matchless name. You can worship me, you can also sing with me the song, something about that name. It's very easy. Sing with me, sing with us. Jesus, Jesus, please, Jesus, there's just something. Jesus, Jesus. 
We worship that name. We give honor and praise Jesus, our Redeemer, our Savior, our door to heaven. And we give thanks and praise unto God for sending His own Son. Glory to God for Christ, our Messiah, is come. Jesus come and we celebrate Christmas because of his arrival. It's an old cliche, but he is the reason for the season. It's hard to fathom that the issue of Christmas is some circles has become what to do with Jesus. Banning the major sins, re renaming Christmas trees, schools removing carols about the birth of Christ. What about what a tragedy? For that innocent, perfect baby in Bethlehem is God reaching out to hurting world. Christmas is far more than an annual holiday. For Jesus is far more than just a character or a religious story. You cannot constrain Jesus to any particular day, for all his history is related to him. The whole Bible is filled with references to Jesus in one way or another. In Genesis, he is creator for all things were made by him. In Exodus, he is the deliverer that passed over long. In Leviticus, he is a great high priest of eternal sacrifice. And in Numbers, Jesus is the true guide, the cloud in the daytime, and the pillar of fire in the darkness of night. In Deuteronomy, he is a prophet who is greater than Moses. In Joshua, the captain of salvation. The one who leads us into the promised land. In Joshua, the captain of all salvation. The one who leads us into the promised land. In Judges, he is both judge and lawgiver. And in Ruth, he is our kinsman, redeemer. In Samuel, kings and chronicles, 
is the prophet of the Lord and the reigning king. In Israel, he is the one who fulfills his promises. In Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of the broken and torn down walls in our lives. In Esther, he reveals the providence of God. In Job, he is our ever-living redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd in our song. In Proverbs, he is wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, Jesus is our only hope. And in Song of Solomon, he is the bridegroom, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the lover of my soul. In Isaiah, he is wonderful, counts the Lord, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, Lamentations, he is the Father who puts our broken lives back together again. In Ezekiel, he is the what's meant our soul in our high tower. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is a fruitful giver and everlasting love. In Joel, he is the one who pours out his spirit on all flesh. In Amos, he is a burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is our Savior. In Jonah, he is merciful and full of grace. In Micah, he is a ruler called out to Bethlehem. In Nahum, Jesus, our avenger. In Habakkuk, he is the one who justifies by faith. In Zephaniah, Jesus is Lord, mighty to save. In Haggai, He is our stronghold, a day of trouble. Zechariah, He is the one whose feet will stand in that day on Mount Olives as king over all the earth. In Malachi, He is a sign of the righteous rising with healing in His wings. In Matthew, He is Messiah and King. Mark, Wonder Worker. Luke, Son of Man. In John, Son of God. Acts, He is our ascended Lord. In Romans, He is our salvation. 1st and 2nd Corinthians, He is Redeemer and the Lord of Glory in Galatians. He is the one who sets us free. Ephesians, He is our chief cornerstone. In Philippians, He is God who meets our every need. In Colossians, He is the hope of glory. 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, He is our soon coming King. 1st and 2nd Timothy, He is the mediator between God and man. In Titus, He is our God, great God and Savior. Philemon, He's a friend and sticks closer than a brother. In Hebrews, he's the blood that watches away my sins. In James, he's a great physician. In 1st and 2nd Peter, the chief shepherd. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, he is a righteous, true, and loved God. In Jude, he is the Lord coming with 10,000 saints. In Revelation, he is the Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
Can we give God a big round of applause? And also a big round of applause to our choir. And to each and every one of you. Of course, uh, we would like to thank God for that, you know, sustaining grace and uh, for giving us this wonderful moment of, you know, remembering Him. We'd like to appreciate the choir. And I'd like to introduce to you our uh, choir, the choir of Cosby Bay Baptist International Mission Church. We have here Pressy. Pressy, are you there? We have uh, Arlene Artieda. Yvonne, can you please stand up? Irene Castor. Gina Cantalopez. Grace Chavez. Skylin Delanon. Marina Evangelista, Leia Gabayeron, Nenita Galfo, Heidi Gregorio, Catherine Guzman, Minette Magsino, Esmeralda Martinez, Judith Oliverio, Ruth Rabaja, Rabaja, Annalyn Rubino, Susan Pio, Marjorie Taguba, and Leticia Vidal. And for our kids, where are the kids? Oh, they're there. We have Aljaire and Aljaire Arbolario. Okay. And also we have Sirene, Sirene Chan. No, she didn't make it. Ira and Denon Estrebor. Nicole, Tricia, and Romeo Hernandez. And we have Blessing. Okay. Of course, our narrators. We have Gigi Peralta. Of course, just on time, thank God for Nimrod, Brother Nimrod also. And we have uh, our pianist, Anger, Anger Planas. And our director, our director, Ma'am Lorna Gabinera. Okay, I would like also to greet our guest. We have so many guests. As I call your name, please stand up because we want to recognize you. We have here uh, Dorna Antonio. Okay, she's there. We have Carmelia, Carmelia Cannon. We have uh, Chair Wong, Chair Wong. Okay, at the back. We have Matthew, Matthew Lee. We have uh, Jayan Jonah. Yeah, there she just accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We have Delia Ulaivar. Maridet Palau. Young Edmund Young. Edmond, okay, he's there. Susan Cruz. Nita Ambus. Nita, Nida, Nida, I'm sorry, Nida. Okay. Elenet or Elevret Repinoso. Okay, it's there. And uh, we have the the Planas family here. Giria, Gernim, and Nimrod and Jenry. Okay. There they are. We have uh, Nitz Tanchuan. She's there. And Vilma Garcia at the back. We have Markaida Helen, Helen, yeah, in front, and then we have Le Leslie Aquino, Leslie, the back. We have Amelinda, Amelinda Jomarin, Jomaran. We have Amy, Amy. We have Arlene Sanchez. Okay, we have here Pastor Jonard Gallo. We have uh, Corina, Corina Gallardo. We have Ricky, Ricky, Christine. We have Joan. Joan, are you there? Yeah, she's there. We have Amelia Hidalgo, Amelia. And we have here Evelyn, Evelyn Ravana. 
We have Pernicia, Mirna, Mirna Pernicia. Okay, she's there. We have Samantha, Tiffany, and then what's this, Braco? Okay, he's there. Okay, once again, the Cosby Bay Baptist International Mission Church welcomes you all. Thank you so much for coming. So we have one more, Jaisel de la Cruz. Jaisel. Okay, is anyone among here in our meet today who doesn't mention or I didn't mention your name? Anyone, guess who didn't fill out the form? Can you please stand up? Yes, what's your name, please? Hilda. Yeah, Hilda. Okay. okay, we have also uh, the employer of our uh, uh, sister Tita. Can you please stand up? Sita, Tita, employer is still there. Glad to see you here. Okay, announcement again after the service. Please proceed to our church. Because this is the... Uh, the church of our mother church. So, after this, we have to proceed to our church. Okay, the ushers will guide you there. And um, also, I would like to ask the help of those uh, brethren who invited them or who, who uh, brought your friends here to come. Please go with them after this uh, service. And also, after this, in our church, we will have our games and some you know exchange gifts all right i think no more atilarna do you okay atilarna will say something we do not want to leave out our couples here who celebrated the anniversary of course we have brother rodel and uh, rose nan celebrating the 17th, last 23rd of December, and today is the 20th anniversary of Brother 2019. Brother Tim and Hilda. Today, and uh, Pastor Tondo, although his wife is not here, is 22, 27, 27. Pastor Tondo. Okay, so. the December, um, Romy and uh, Millet will celebrate in March. March now. Okay. Um, you would like to invite you again on January 1. That will be in our church. We will have another concert, but it will not be the choir who will be singing. It will be the Planas family. So... Maririnig natin sila. We don't know yet. Kaya pahinga ang choir. So praise the Lord for everything. Thank you for coming. Thank you for worshiping God with us. And may this be a blessed day that you will remember in your life, even as you go back to your workplace and to our home, and will give encouragement as well as comfort as we face the task before us. Thank you. Okay, may correction daw dito, hindi tatlong hari, kundi tatlong mago. Uh, o mago. Okay, we'll sing ang Pasko ay sumapit on your program.
just before we close, I want each one to go home with assurance that you have really worshipped the true Jesus. Because today, there are many Jesus or Jesuses. Our friends, the Iglesia Ni Cristo would tell us that that Jesus is only human. He is not the Jesus that we must worship. The Jehovah's Witnesses would tell us that that Jesus is a small God. He is an inferior God to the Father. He is not the one Jesus you are supposed to worship. The Mormons, our friends, they have also a different Jesus because that Jesus was once a man who became God. That is the reverse of, of what we believe. That Jesus we know is the Son of God and God Himself who became a man. If you ask the many Muslim friends, He is just counted as one of the human prophets. Did you worship the true Jesus this afternoon? If you are here and you have some questions, maybe you can just ask somebody on your side or the one who brought you here. He can tell you more about this Jesus. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you because your word is open. And thank you for the Holy Spirit who gave us the enlightenment, the understanding that true simple faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have this life and hope. We have sang that Tagalog song Bagong taon, magbagong buhay. Lord, there is only something new when we are truly related to the person of Jesus. Because it's in Christ that we found newness. The Bible is telling us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. It is only in Christ that we found newness. Lord, thank you because you found us and you gave us life. This is the true essence of the purpose of your coming. Christmas seasons come and go but without Christ, there is no real Christmas experience in our life. Oh Lord, thank you that we have worshipped you through this presentation of the messages of the song and even through your word. Oh, that we will uh, go home really blessed. And Lord, I just pray as a visiting minister of your word, that you continue to shower your blessing upon these children of yours working here in Hong Kong, away from home, experiencing all sorts of trials and sufferings in their lives because of their loved ones. May you just continue to help them and sustain them. As believers, May you just continue to let their lives be a shining testimony, a little light in this part of the dark world where they can shine as your lights, as the Lord has commanded us to let our light shine before men so that it will bring glory to the Father in heaven. 
Lord, again, to you alone, all our praises, our doxology, and dismiss us with your blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Good day. And it's really happy Christmas when you have Christ. If not, then it's just an ordinary celebration without meaning. Merry Christmas! Advance up in your year. prepare food for you so um, those if you have an invited guest please take care of them take them back to the to our church